we going live, and that's fire on the set right there. Don't burn yourself. Just put your hair back and slide up against the wall when you come into the studio. What's good, people? I, I'm your host, Jeff Taylor. I got a graphic. What's good? I'm so glad you could make it to the show today. Man, it's been a trying week for all of us, a trying year for everybody. You know, I'm getting my second COVID shot tomorrow. I'm excited about that. I encourage you to do the same. Just try to not spread and pass the thing, you know what I mean? If we can get a COVID shot, go ahead and get it. Welcome to the Mad Jeff Music Show. What's good? Hey, listen, today my guest is the Grammy Award winning uh what else is he he's uh he's a super talented uh producer this guy billy steel he's a musical director singer minister i need you in my life <laughs> that's the things i want to tell you man you know i'm kidding bro but you know what I, one thing i'm not kidding about uh, is that i love this guy and i'm glad he's on my show billy is a go-to guy of mine back in the day he worked at flight time for jimmy and terry that was his first gig and the steals and then whenever prince called him in the middle of the night and then on whenever he had any spare time he would come out to my place and do a a thing or two as well but before we get into that folks before we get into it to the to the fun part of the show i want to do some news real quick because i got a little news bit i want to run let's do this here's my news bit and it's gonna go like this so don't it's coming it's coming billy hang in there check it out what's the news what is the doggone news? This dude is in the news talking about he want a new trial. I don't even understand it. So I'm not going to spend too much time on it. I'm just going to wish all the heebie-jeebies I got on anybody that has any decision-making power in this process and that they all can come to their senses pretty soon and realize what a waste of time it is to even consider such a thing. Another thing in the news I want you to check out is uh, this. This is in Florida. <coughs> this is in Florida. Watch this. Watch this. No, put your hands down. No, no. Now don't do it again. And sit down. Sit down. This is the shocking part. You better tell your mama sorry, and you better not treat her like that either. That's the shocking part to me when she said, you better tell your mama. <laughs> We can't roll like that. We can't roll like that. Enough about that. Enough about that. Look, I'm tired of talking about the stuff in the news because there's always something in the news. You know, I try to tune it out as much as I can, but you can't because there's people in Florida whacking people with that paddle. Where does that happen? Like Game of Thrones or something? But not in our school system. Anyway, look, enough about this. Let me, let me, I got a cue. Let me get, let me try this cue right here. See if this, uh, this will warm you up. The blackness. Oh, snap. Who is this? Oh, Ladies and gentlemen, I just <laughs> snuck him in the set real quick. This is my dog right there. Ladies and gentlemen, this What's is Billy up, Steele. Jeff? What's oh, up, Billy. baby? What's happening, player? Man, I'm glad to be with you, man. Absolutely glad to see you, man. I miss you, man. It's been a lot of years. Man, where does the time go, Billy? Where does the time go, man? I really don't know. I don't know, but man, it's definitely in my weight and my beard. <laughs> you know, I'm at the point where I just I'm not even worried about the gray anymore, bro. I'm just gonna let it go because it's under there. I know that's, it's just that's what I did, man. Got grandbabies, man. I do it now. It's all you good. Granddaughters, you ahead of me. You got me on that one. I ain't quite there yet. Yes, sir. Billy Steele of the Grammy Award winning Sounds of Blackness, the incredible Steele family. Um, just a hitter all the way around. You know it. You know it's true. Talk to me a little bit, because this is something that I wanted to talk to you about real quick before we get into all the stuff I want to talk to you about. Okay, when I sorry. first started at Flight Time, Billy, I used to be in the studio, and Jimmy and Terry would tell me everything that was going on. I would knew everything that was going on, because I was working in C and A, B and C, all the studios or whatever. But late at night, sometime like 3 in the morning, that doorbell would ring, and I'd be, ooh, 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 we done, ain't we done? But no, it'd be Billy Steele come <laughs> sliding the side door. <laughs> <laughs> slide in the studio B with Jimmy or Terry for like a one-on-one -on -one session, which means to me that what was, I already know what was going on. Cause I've had a lot of one-on-one -on -one sessions with you. So I already know what was going, what you was given. Right, right, right. You were given. <laughs> hey man, ivories. listen, it was always, if you got that call, man, that was a great call to have just to have the opportunity to sit with such great producers, man, to find out 
what makes them click too, man. You know what I loved about all of that when I think about it now, though, the most, Jeff, is that um, we got to kind of talk about a lot of things. We talked about politics. We talked about family. Like, we shared about things that were going on in our lives as as brothers, as black men in this, in this country. And to this day, I'll never forget a lot of those conversations that were much more important than whatever we were doing musically. Although the music thing was always so much fun. But those conversations sometimes, man, were life changing. You know? I agree. I mean, we, we became men there. I mean, I think we were we spent so much time together that we mm -hmm. we when we weren't making music, we were we were talking about everything in between, everything in between. Yeah. You know, and it was funny. It was like being and in you a fish find out. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, you, you, I'm the host. You go. No, but I was saying that a lot of times we 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 got to find out literally how Jam and and Lewis thought. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people don't get to have that closeness with them to find out like how they think about right. life in general, religion and everything else. You know, I'm just like, man, that's amazing. They think that way. It's cool. Well, you know what surprised me the most? I think I'm a big sports fan, and as you might not know this, but today I actually produce for ESPN College Sports, produce and direct college sports games. I'm a big sports fan. I always have been. And what shocked me about Jimmy and Terry was that both of them were diehard sports fans. And Jimmy would literally put that game on an NBA channel with satellite or whatever. He watched every game right. all night, and he could talk to you exactly. about all the players and the stats and stuff like that. So there was a lot of real living going on in addition to making the music. Exactly, exactly. And you know what I love about it, because you know I love sports too. We talked about it late up in the night. I mean, that was a constant conversation. Yeah, that was and always... you see, I got my, my, my bear. Bears? Yeah, <laughs> Doc. Did, have you, Come on, uh, man. Andy Dalton is your next quarterback, I hear, right? Is that, is that true? Okay, yeah. Let it go. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> He's got I, more lives yeah, than I'll a cat. Take, I wouldn't I'll be surprised. Andy Dalton, man. I'll take Andy Dalton over Mitch, man, right now. Because Mitch was don't get me wrong. That kid was learning, man. He had an arm. There was some things about him I liked. But they needed a quarterback, man. And finally to get a get a brother, too, man. I'm like, yeah, Justin Fields, let's do this. It's going to be interesting. It. It's going to be interesting. Billy, so it's talk to me. Because a lot of people don't know that you, you are, you know, there's Gary Hines who leads the Sounds of Blackness. And then Gary's yes, got a absolutely. key man, his key man. For, for, for all the years of success on the road and the studio and in, in collaboration with and rehearsal, everything, that key man, that guy to his right, it was you, Billy Steele. <laughs> well, now, let me, let, me, let me say this. Historically, Russell Knighton actually was kind of the key man in the earlier days of 1969 when they wrote uh, McAllister Black Music Ensemble. But when it became Sounds of Blackness, I, you know, I wasn't the assistant director until a few, like, few years later on after getting off the road. Me and Big Jim basically started as members at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, although I was playing for them since 1988, Big Jim started a few years later when we came up with that second record. And uh, he and I were even roommates. But, but me and Gary were roommates first on the road when we go out on, uh, on the road. And a lot of conversations with Gary I would have, man, I was just amazed at how much information that guy had in his head, man. Right. Yeah, I mean, that dude was teaching all the time, man. And he's such an uh, intellectual musician. He's not yeah. just somebody who plays, but he right. understands the reason why we do what we do. Yeah. yeah you know. A special, a special gift. So, but, and really I know. based that comment, I based that comment on just kind of what I saw in the process that of working with you guys. And we worked on a lot of projects together. And uh, during that time, I saw the collaboration process. But tell me about this record, man, because this record did kind of good for you guys, man. I mean, this wasn't, this wasn't a bad thing to be in touring <laughs> on, huh? God, no. I mean, Evolution of Gospel, man, is what launched. You know, there's a lot of artists that are out right now who saw the template that Sounds of Blackness set. And have used it to now, man, they've been very successful. You may not hear Sounds of Blackness mentioned as much in their interviews, but there are certain things they do that I go, oh, yeah, I remember when we started doing that because gospel music wasn't popular to be on uh, on radio like that, like popular radio, R&B stations and right. stuff like that. You know, Jam Lewis, they just go out there. They, everybody looked at it just music. Right. Hey, we're doing the music about people. That's what we're doing. Right. We're not trying to, you know, bring separatism into what we're doing. We're actually right. trying to teach and influence people about the music of our people. That's true. 
And uh, so you guys got a, a lot of life out of that. I mean, you, I, you got, I know I toured with you guys a little bit. I did the HBCUs with you and uh, yeah, and Japan <laughs> and places like that. And I know you guys, I know you smile. Every time I say Japan, I notice you smile. And I know why you smile, too. Because it, <laughs> it, it was all, you know, it was all about sake and song, man. You know what I mean? I was trying to yeah, man. Did you want to tell hey, that story, Billy? I don't know about it. Listen, man, Jeff, just, oh, he man, got really so comfortable sick. one time at the, at the club and decided he going to sing a little bit. Man, we weren't ready. We weren't ready. Now, Jeff got a voice. Now, he can sing. Trust me, all them studio sessions, he be telling us what to do. You know. <laughs> he got applause and everything. He said I can sing. When you, when you said I can yeah. sing. See, you I've been sing. haunted you by that sing. sake nightmare for, for years, bro. Because here's oh, the deal, man. Billy. I got up there on stage. Everybody was singing. All the singers were going up. And there's a thousand singers in the group. And everyone was going up one after another singing. And I said, well, I know a song. I know, I know Otis Redding sitting on the dock of the bay. But when I got up there... All I remember was the sake. And then I don't remember any of the lyrics. So naturally, if you don't know the lyrics, That's what do you do? You scat. <laughs> right. You scat. You go and scat. Dar you know Daryl Boudreaux didn't let that go either. <laughs> Daryl started doing it. Every time we got on the bus, he was like, scat. Oh, listen, scat. <laughs> let me tell you something about Mr. Daryl Boudreaux. To this yeah. day, when I see Daryl, first thing he says yeah. is Jeff. He goes, hey, Jeff. Then he goes, scat. <laughs> I'd be like, man, look, you can stop with all that scat and stuff, man. That that joke exactly. is exactly that joke is two thousand. What year was that? Anyway, that was nineteen ninety nine, two thousand. Oh, I don't that remember, was a minute man. ago. We, These that was a minute fun, ago. Man. But you know, Japan was a lot of fun, though, man. Just in general, man. And oh, to have somebody God. like you behind the board for us, oh, we man. was so comfortable, man, with that moment. I was like, we was about to be on until they started telling you in no, Japanese what they say you got to do now you got to do this no, they, <laughs> then it changed a little bit you got to turn it down everything needs to come yeah, way turn it down, down. Like, well, this, what? these people love this bring it down so that was hard but you know right. what that, you live and you learn at that time I was I had learned, like, yeah. I had an ego and a chip on my shoulder so I didn't want to hear anybody telling me that but you know eventually <laughs> I've, I've learned that that's not necessarily not necessarily how you Sometimes you got to compromise, you know, even as a young man, yeah. you know, you got to compromise. But think about all the fun that we had in Japan, though, God, man. Even man. just the, I, the concerts were so fun oh and the my people, God. man. Oh, After man. After parties. Oh, man. So much fun. Who knew there were so many black Japanese people? Right. I had no idea. <laughs> it was great, man. It was, that was one of the coolest, coolest places ever, man. What about Absolutely. these guys, though, man? Can you tell me something about these guys? These guys, you know some of these guys for a minute right here, bro. Who are these dudes? Oh, yeah, Absolutely. So the, you know, the Sounds of Blackness is really known for its band as well. And uh, you got David Wright on sax there. And of course, we call him Section Sims, Larry Sims from Detroit. You got uh, Devo on guitar and then Big L drummer. Now, we've had several other music, of course, Gary Hines. We, we've had several other musicians that have played, but like I said, Big Jim, of course. Right, of course. Uh, we had uh, Mufin DC, Joe Young on bass before, Paul Johnson, uh, Johannes Tona from Ethiopia. So we've had some of them. I mean, even Mike Scott and Levi Caesar, man. You remember yes. we did the, um, what was that? The Europe, the European tour was the, uh, it's a bunch of jazz festivals. We did Montreux Jazz Festival and all that. And Mike Scott and Levi Caesar were on that together. <laughs> man, you talking about nuts. And my sister Javita actually joined us on that one. Because Ann was finishing her record then. Crazy. Man, you talking about crazy. That it was crazy. nuts, man. I, I love Mike music, and man. And Levi that. together, Mike and Levi and, and Levi on the same show. That'd be pretty <sighs> awesome. Speaking of Javita, that lovely sister of yours, tell, tell me about your family, Billy the Steel family. You guys are playing. You, you, you your musical family. Everybody plays and sings, and you guys sing as a group. Right. And you, you perform right. all over. Tell us a little bit about that, man. Where can people see about that band? Music? Real quick, though, I will add Trinan Graham because Trinan was important at that very beginning. Trinan oh, Graham was a drummer. You know. No, that's not true. No, he's not in there. That dude looked like he's Trinan, not that, But I, I just named Trinan. some of the other Look like Trinan with name. some weight on him. <laughs> that's some, Big L, man. That's boots. one of my producer friends there, man. Big L Productions. But listen, uh, my family, I just left actually a birthday lunch for my sister, Geraldine. She's had a birthday today. And we all sat down and ate together with my mom, who now is going on 87. Wow. And she's doing wonderful, man. After being isolated in this uh, pandemic time. Yes. Uh, to have her out and just enjoying life, man, is that's priceless. I don't even know how to explain that any better than that. That's a beautiful but if, man, but singing and music started with my family, literally. Uh, in my life, they sang in church. They used to open for Mahalia Jackson and all kind of other big names, man. And um, it was the four of them. It was J.D., Fred, Gerland, and Janice. 
And Javita, Javita came along a little later and became a little superstar like Michael Jackson back in the day. Right. You know, we're all from Gary, Indiana originally. And uh, and I came a little later on. I like bugs and weather for some reason as a child growing up. I wasn't, wasn't into all that music. My uncles would want us to all come together and sing. And I was like, I don't really sing. <laughs> but right around about the age of, I'd say, 13 or so, I started fooling around with the keyboard, man. I started putting a couple of notes together. Man, I got excited because it sounded kind of cool. And I kept trying to replicate what I was hearing on radio or something. I was like, hey, that's kind of coming together. Then I went to, you know, middle school, man. I had little girls coming in the room while I was trying to practice on the piano, talking about, oh, is you playing the piano? I was like, oh, doc, man. I, now, I love sports, but I couldn't play nothing good. Right. <laughs> I was good at basketball, football, yeah, none of that shot. stuff, man. I've seen that jump right. shot. Right. It's horrible. But, hey. I got on the piano, man. Hey, whatever her name is, she was going, yo, I like him. I was like, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, huh? So, you know, you start learning, man, what, what it is you put it. But then I started falling in love with music, man. Yeah. And I changed my palate a bit because growing up in church, I just listened to gospel music. But as I got older, I started listening to everything. I listen to R&B, country, everything, man. I always try to encourage musicians, man, to, to uh, expand your palate a bit right. so that you don't get stuck in one genre where you can't do anything else, you know? good stuff so family family are you guys still performing now as a group i know you, your brothers are you got fred and jd and you guys you guys are amazing yeah we gotta like had we, your own star thing happening it's so funny man because we all do different things jd is still producing tons of projects and we we did a thing uh with rita mustafi as a it was a dance piece with katha dancers uh from india and we did, uh, we started here, a small production, then we did it at a theater. And man, we ended up being in India for three weeks. We started off in New Delhi, man. We did a national te nationally televised dance uh, competition in Kalaraju in India. And man, when I tell you the experience in India was so uniquely different. In fact, the little time we had off, I think we had a day and a half off. We actually mm -hmm. took a trip to Agra, Agra to uh, see the Taj Mahal. And to actually experience that with my oldest brother was just priceless, man. So it was so much fun. The, all the all the steals were there, pretty much that performance. No, it was just JD and I for that oh, trip. Okay, okay, just the two. Of you. JD, that's that's what I was hitting to. I was saying that uh, each each individual steal does so many things. You know, yeah. Javita's been nominated right. for Oscar, and you know, oh, been in yes. movies. Jerlin's been in movies. Prayer Home Companion. JD and Fred do tons of productions and Fred does tons of stuff as far as teaching and schools and all that. And then it was me who was just trying to play a little bit. And then Janice, and nobody talks about her. She's a pastor oh. <laughs> in California okay. awesome. and doing everything there, man, and making sure that people are taken care of and living good, man, and eating well. Well, you know, Billy, you know, you kind of had cheat codes, you know, to learn to play the piano because if your sister was, Jaf was Jafita, right? And she was over there singing, and you was trying to play, and she was saying, "Dang, that's like a cheat code, ain't it?" I mean, you had, you did, you was ultimately gonna be the bad dude you became. No, man. You know my brother Fred though played, yeah. And he was the one I heard first. That's the one I started listening to. Going him and my uncle Moses Steele, and man, they could really play. I was I just sit there and listen to him. He could play anything, seemed like. And as as he got older, and they went off to college, kind of left me there with my sisters, you know. I just started fooling around with a broken keyboard in the basement. And when it started coming together as what I was hearing in my ear, that's when I said, yeah, I need, I need to follow this up a little bit more. And I tried to go get lessons when I was a kid. My mom tried to do it. But that lady showed up with a ruler, man, in her hand. She was, I think she was about to whoop me like you know, that kid was getting whooped in Florida. <laughs> Did you see that? I mean, Billy, come on. I heard you in the green room. You was in there yeah. cracking up. That first whack was hard, right. though. <laughs> why do I? Why does that seem so familiar to me? Though you ever get hit with a paddle like that as a kid, Billy? Yeah, that's man. I grew up in that day when I you know so that too. punishment I, was something they did. Yeah. When that first whack hit him, I I, I went like, hey, yeah. Yeah, you, you felt that from the history, huh? I felt that from the history. <laughs> but I'm gonna tell you something. That lady, that lady turned around and said, "You know, you tell your mama over there." Uh, uh, that's <laughs> right. crazy. Uh, you know, that I'm silly, is crazy. Go that's crazy. That's silly, but. What else I want to talk to you about? I want to talk to you about what's been going on with you lately, man. What do you, what do you, you're in Minneapolis, still based in Minneapolis, married to a based lovely in Minneapolis, lady. You've been yeah. married to this lovely lady for like a long Almost time. Almost 30 years, man. Yeah. 30 years. About 30 years, man. Oh, yeah. Me and her have been married, man. Yeah. We have four children her, and three grandchildren. 
I grabbed her yeah. best uh, Hollywood style, you know, sunglass picture for her, and I hope she's good. Yeah, that's oh, actually man. us in New York on that picture. We were in New York visiting my daughter and her husband and my and two of my grandchildren who live in New York, really and cool. uh, just hanging out, man. Ain't nothing like family, man. I'm telling you, man. That is like that is my pride and joy right there, man. I'm telling you, I feel like God has really blessed us greatly. That's and uh, unfortunately, even while we're doing this interview, she's had to deal with some um, some illness today. So she went into urgent care. She's been texting me, let me know how she's doing, but she's doing okay. But I just keep praying for her to get through this point. Over here, two prayers up right now for that. You know, Absolutely. Be she's healthy. she's gonna be good. Good. good yeah. Good. But uh, I'm I'm music director at Fellowship Missionary Baptist Church now. Uh, in Minneapolis. Uh, okay. okay. Uh, do you remember Fellowship. Fellowship Missionary Baptist Church back in the day? Yeah, of course, of course. Reverend of course. Gorman, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So you over I'm, there? I'm, I'm here now. You over there running the running the show over there? Then. Musically, yeah, musically, I'm doing the thing musically, and I'm loving it, man. I got, I mean, I feel so blessed, man. That God has always given me uh, opportunities to work with such amazing people, man. And I mean, the choir is talented. I have some phenomenal musicians. And a pastor who is just crazy about the church. You know, he's young too. He's really young, but he uh, he just started here a year ago. And man, this guy, he's phenomenal awesome. preacher and teacher. So, anyways, I love what I do, cool. and I think one of the biggest reasons because I mean, think about it. This is what I do full time music, and I get to do it, man, and work with people whose dreams are coming true, and some people who are just starting off. Some people can't sing a lick. And I just love it anyways because they try so hard and I love it. It's hey, just great, man. It's awesome. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, I'm enjoying that same thing about teaching and about working in college is that I'm, I'm, ex I'm reaching kids. Because remember, we like you talked about earlier, we used to sit around and talk. There would just be six or seven of us. Right. We were, it was a closed community, wasn't it? You wasn't, it was. You wasn't reaching Very anybody, much so. really. And nobody no. was reaching you. <laughs> you know? No. But now, exactly. we, now we're older, we get a chance to get kind of get back. That's one of the reasons I wanted to do this show too, Billy, is because I want to be able to reach young kids who are wanting. You, you got to be curious. See, the, today kids are just too cool to ask the questions that they that we used to ask. But if mm -hmm. we put it out there for them to see, then they can just tune in when they want to. Don't have to be on the live, and maybe you'll get some answers from some veterans that that'll that'll lead you in the right direction in a career. You know. Yeah, you know, I do a residency at Minnehaha Academy here. Nice. I don't know if you're familiar with Minnehaha. Oh, yeah. If you know anything about sports, I know you got to know about Minnehaha yeah, Academy. Yeah, I know about Minnehaha Academy. Them yeah. boys can ball yeah. out. You hear me? Oh. Jalen Suggs, man, yeah. they, they tough. But anyway, I do a residency there uh, with their music program. We do a gospel thing. They do a chapel thing. So every year, I've been doing that for the last five years. Okay. It's priceless, man, to talk to these young people. You know, the first thing they want to ask, who'd you work with? You ever work with Beyonce? Yeah. <laughs> and I go... I've never worked with Beyonce. You've never worked with Beyonce but before, but you but you have worked with this girl. Yes, Jamisia Bennett, man. Jamisia yes. Bennett is Beyonce twice. <laughs> right. She's Two times. She, she, she just the world just don't know yet. They when the world finds out, they're gonna they they're gonna be on like, okay, we didn't know. That girl can sing. Yes, her mama, her and her daughter are all yeah, just ridiculous, just, man. Vocally, her just and Nesby, and her daughter is Paris. My gosh. Yep. And you know, when you hear them sing, you just realize, man, I get to hear this like in the group that I'm in. That's crazy. You know, <laughs> you know? Nuts Whenever that, she man. sings, you just realize oh that God, she so can talented. sing and everybody else might be learning how to sing. That girl can really sing. She can really, really sing. I, I love her. I love that that entire family, man. They that that whole that whole clan was just incredibly talented. Like you just and the people Ooh were just wee. almost not totally tuned into it. It's like people really don't know just how powerful they are as singers and, and musicians and stuff like that in their family. You remember when we were in the studio up in the night with BB Winans? Yeah. And my sister Javita? <laughs> yeah. That song actually got placed too in Europe. It did. Um, I can't remember the name of the group though, but it was a, it's a European group in London, and they did really well, man. That song actually nice. did really well. But it was funny because we were doing the, uh, we were doing the, uh, what do you call it, uh, the tryout for it, yeah, and BB you. was working with me writing it, I and we had that, Javita yeah. come in and actually sing, and he worked her like crazy. <laughs> Javita nice was guy, like, that's was, not it. I loved working with BB. BB, he was a nice guy. He's a nice guy. Oh man, yeah, he's so talented, man. He said, I still talk to him you frequently do? on and off, man. That dude is busy. busy. <laughs> he's always busy. Well, I'm surprised. so you as busy as you want to be. I mean, you ain't you ain't really trying to get on no airplanes and fly all over the world unless you unless it's on vacation. You ain't trying to work like that these days, are you? People 
Take not care. like that no more now. I've gotten older now, man. I actually appreciate the tree in front of my house a lot more now. <laughs> I know that's right. I'm trying and to plus, you know, we, we, we have studio setups wherever I need to go to, yeah. man, and record things here and there. Uh, I've been doing more corporate things as okay. well, uh, you know, commercial pieces. Yeah. You know, just, just putting this stuff out there. It, it ain't going to get me the, the awards like we had with all the Grammys and all that stuff we did. But, man, we get pieces, though. Don't matter. I see you doing a lot of other little stuff like promotion and things like that. And you're, you're putting your, your, your signature to some various projects that people are, are doing and kind of giving them your blessing and stuff. And I think that's pretty cool, man, for, for you to be getting into as well, man. I see you doing a lot. Oh, of yeah, things. absolutely, man. We, we've you. done plenty. <laughs> we've Bobby done on. plenty. And I try to keep up, man, with everybody, you know, from Stokely to, you know, Prof T and them, man. I'm, I'm thankful for all these social media ideas that people came up with so we can keep in contact, FaceTime every now and then. But, man, I'm so glad that you and I reconnected because I'm like, man, I, I think about just sometimes being like, where's Jeff at? This number ain't working. I'm down here. Man, I mean, you, you got my, I'm going to get my number. It's 407. I, I got, I got it now. All right, good. But, yeah, you just called me a minute ago. But, uh, you know, when I told, when I was talking to Gary, he was on the show. I was like, man, I got to get Billy on the show. He was like, I was like, but I don't think I have Billy's number. Could you give me Billy's number? So I texted you and you didn't respond. And then Gary said, Did you, what did Billy say? I said, uh, Gary, he didn't respond. You know, well, I don't know why he didn't respond. I love Billy. What's going on here? <laughs> Gary said, let me hold on. I'll be right back. <laughs> he had to go and get you and say, look, that's Jeff Taylor. That Jeff Taylor. Your friend. Right. He's your friend too, Billy. Don't be like that. That's Billy, hilarious. That's not how that what, 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 else have we, what else do we need to talk about? So the Sounds of Blackness, we worked on a reconciliation album together. You know, Billy, one of my favorite projects that we ever did together, we were ever involved in, was the, was the, uh, the Phil Collins remake of um, Another Day in Paradise. You sang lead. Another right? Day in Paradise. Oh, yes, that sir. Was so that cool. was fun, man. I need to find that and put that on like YouTube or someplace for people to see and hear because that was such a great song that was buried in, in, a, in a project. That you sang lead on. I know. You were smooth. You were smooth. I was Carrie really hoping that I was going to come out to it. it. Who was? Carrie Harrington. Um, she sang her verse on that Dot Choppa as well, I believe, didn't she? Or no? I know, but I mean, I know she sang a verse on, uh, what's the song? Uh, 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 gosh. <laughs> uh, so which, many. Would you know my name if I saw you oh. in heaven? I can turn the music off. No, that. <laughs> I'm trying to think of the song. That's why I was singing. Working the song out. I spoke to Carrie too recently. She's going to come on the show. So she'll probably oh, know. Oh, good, and good. She's going to come on and kick it a little bit. I can't wait, man. I'm so excited about the possibility. That's another one, man. Think about all the, the songs that Carrie's voice is on that people probably wouldn't even know. Don't even have a clue. She was one of the most. Yeah. Her she, voice was so pop friendly that Carrie kept calling her. Carrie called her so much. She was in. The, there was nights where she just would show up and it'd be like she'd be there for four hours and had to get up and go to work work in the morning you know what i mean it's, i know you would be putting <laughs> exactly. that work but here's that group man. here's that group now this is the group now this is um a lot of people a lot of new faces in this joint man this group has has merged and 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 moved and f- transfixed and transformed <laughs> a lot of beautiful black people in this group man because gary is always working that element who's that guy to the left to get to the right to the top of gary right there uh, that's Lewis Wilson. Oh my God, I thought that I was know, Lewis. man. I Lewis, Lewis in Wilson. Hundred years. <laughs> oh my God, Lewis Wilson. If you' watching this, brother, if you don't reach out to me, man. I, I know, I'm Lewis here. Wilson. You know what's funny is that uh, that picture has a lot of the younger adults that are growing up uh-huh. here in the Twin Cities. It's funny because whenever I go out of town, a lot of black people I you know talk to in Atlanta or different places, they're like, man, ain't no black people in Minnesota. <laughs> I was like, uh, if you ain't been watching the news, I don't know how you would say that, right? Yeah, right. So, <laughs> I mean, clearly, there's black people in Minnesota. Yeah. But um, they're there so talented, There weren't any when I got there when I moved there, but, they, but besides y'all. <laughs> well, when did you move? When did you move there? 89, 89, 90. Oh, okay. It was, boy, well, I it moved was... there in 84. Yeah, it was... yeah, I know. I moved in 84, man. Like, it was yeah. just pockets of us. I would go around just driving around trying to see us. Man. <laughs> Radio, look, try to find some collard greens in there. Exactly. You know, like, where do you get the collard greens at? Oh, there's a store. It's, but it's miles yeah, yeah. and miles from here. I mean, you'd be like, right. so no soul food, no nothing? 
No soul food restaurant? Where's the soul food restaurant at? Well, it's over north, Minneapolis. Yeah, Minnesota, man. Food-wise, Minnesota's not really... If you come here thinking you're going to find a better food, man, it's not. That's not here. No. But you can find some stuff here. But There's you can get pockets, some food in here because something. I look at the pictures of when I lived there and I was 55 pounds heavier than I am today. So whatever I was yeah. eating, it was hefty and it was corn-fed. A lot of steak out yeah, there. Yeah, I, I got your steak. pounds. I got them with me now. You're good. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, absolutely. So, so man, but look, it's still cold. We talked about the steels a little bit. I got a cool picture I wanted to show of the steels real quick. But yes, yeah. y'all be doing that Christmas thing, baby. Nah. Yeah, I'm yeah. This, this picture is like a hundred years old, but I just love the That's steels, man. I just, Christmas I just really picture, respect y'all and love what y'all do, man. Y'all hustle is like is is, is extraordinary. It's extraordinary, ladies and gentlemen. You know, you what? know, um, JD and uh, JD introduced me to um, the business better. He gave me a better understanding of how music business works, which is a lot different than just music. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of times people get into the music industry hoping they can just go record a record. It's going to sell thousands and thousands to millions and millions. It's like it doesn't work like that. Right. And now it's even a little more complicated, uh, but easier at the same time. You know what I mean? Everybody got a studio. Everybody using Logic, Pro Tools or Ableton or something. And they are putting out good music, but they ain't selling nothing. They're just giving it away. Everybody's giving music away. And even during this pandemic time, you know, I've been trying to learn some things uh, just technologically, some, some using some different software and stuff, just having some fun on some things, you know. And I love all the stuff. Everything sounds good. Everybody's doing. But, it, man, this is the day you can get some of the best free music you can ever <laughs> in your life. I'm telling it's you. just that I just want to see artists will be blessed. Um, by what they're putting out there creatively, and uh, just hope that they it, the music finds another route to get them what they need financially. Because a lot of them out there, they don't have much money. And they they doing good good work, man. It's, it's amazing music, you know. I think and these kids are super talented. It's got to go back to a live scenario. I mean, it's got to we got to get to a place where we can go into a live venue and see that artist because you're making music at home. The playing field has been leveled. People love your music online. You might make dollar ninety nine cents, you know what I mean, or whatever. But then if you can go to that club and get all those people to come out to that club and see you and pay an admission and buy mm-hmm. food and drinks, then you can get a piece of the door. Then you, then you might be able to make a career. But man, those days of just going in and cutting a record and then being catapulted to the mm-hmm. next level are completely obliterated. And yeah. Never happen. Even branding. Remember how branding was just something that AR people talked about. Everybody right, talked right. about branding in the in the little coffee rooms together, right. but it wasn't something we, we, you know, we was just talking about how we dress and look, right. but it wasn't really the branding thing. Right. Now branding is such a huge thing. Now streaming is everybody's trying to stream. Streaming, and baby. It's amazing, but it, it's one of those things. You, you just got to know what you're doing. That's all. Or else you're just giving away a lot of free music. Yeah, it's happening. It's happening right now. And I don't know who's making the money. I think Spotify's making the money and, and iTunes. I don't know. But the artists, <laughs> yeah. The artists are yeah. not making nothing like royalty checks. We miss exist. Prince, man. Yeah, I think yeah. Prince would have had an answer for all of this. I think he had one coming. Well, honestly, he, he had already. I mean, he had been so far ahead of everybody already fighting against that whole mm-hmm. that whole notion that your music should be online and available to whoever wants it. And then somebody else should be able to parlay that deal for you and give you a percentage. I mean, he's always thought that's wrong. Ain't nothing right about that. You know what I mean? And I agree. Right. I, I agree. And and now, like you say, now to be able to you know to come out and uh, and be a voice to help people understand what the future road is, mm-hmm. well, his voice would be would be instrumental, because there really isn't yeah. anybody coming out to the forefront right now saying, okay, follow me. This is what we're gonna do. Right. We're gonna take the left at the Milky Way and go over here past Mars <laughs> and do it over there. I mean, you know, something's gotta happen. Yeah. But it ain't it ain't nothing that anybody can see. For me, it's streaming and bringing artists together that have a project that want to talk, um, you know, reconnecting vibes, branches, vines. You know, I mean, just trying to keep something going that's good and not letting people forget about the history of guys like yourself, who also work with Prince quite a bit, too. Uh, you, you know, you didn't lose, you didn't talk about that too much, but I know you worked a lot with Prince and, and stuff mm-hmm. and just guy, one of the best musicians on the planet. People are calling you to come in and do work. Well, you know what, man? The Prince thing is probably... My family worked a lot with Prince. Right. Uh, the Steels did. And when they first introduced me to Prince, uh, it was through a phone call. And I ended up meeting Levi Caesar from that phone call. Prince actually called me at home and said that he was Prince. Now, 
I would have been, this is a joke, if my brother hadn't called me and said, Prince asked for your number. But because he said he asked for my number, I took it serious. Otherwise, I'd been saying, this ain't no Prince. But man, he was real laid back and he was like, hey, Mr. Steele, this is Prince. I mean, he was really cool. Mm -hmm. And it was to plan a, a surprise birthday thing for She Lee. Mm -hmm. And he wanted a choir. So he wanted me to put the choir together for the party. And that was my first time ever working with him. But I had to go to Levi Caesar's house, downtown Minneapolis. And I had to sit with him to come up with the idea we were going to do. Man, I was sitting there like, man, and Levi, man, Levi is a beast. That guy is the real deal on guitar and as a producer. He's just ridiculous. Well, you know, I had, you know, I, I know that you guys became really good friends. And I know that me working with you brought Levi to my house. And Levi did a number of sessions with me as well. So, yeah, I mean, just yeah. my guitars would just be tacked up to the wall when Levi came over yeah. because... Well, Hold On, Change Is Coming was written at his house. Yeah, he's a bad In guy. Ramsey. Yeah, we sat true. down on the floor, man, was coming up with lyrics. We put that do-why-diddy bass thing together with that uh, clean-up woman guitar. There you go. And came up with Hold On, Change Is Coming. <laughs> exactly. And when we brought it to Jam and Lewis, we was like, hey, we want to do this, but we like the way it feels right now. So I, we need to change. We got to change the bass line or something because, you know, this is that do-why-diddy rock. Terry was like, hey, man, it's a hit. Just, let's just do this. Let's just, just do it. Make license. some phone calls. Let the license work out. We get it. Just <laughs> let it run. Let it run. Man, this is Well, awesome, then Roger, man. that's how we hooked up with Roger, remember? I know. What that, and that was, that was an interesting time. You guys were working in my house during that time. What were we working on Disney when Roger Troutman passed? I remember we were working on – remember we got a call yeah. from uh, Big uh, Big Rob, was it? Who was uh, yeah. was his right hand man and uh, and right he announced it to us that Roger had died. You guys believe you and Gary were in my basement. We were working on something when we got that call there, and that was yeah, that, that was, was painful, man. To hear just the way it happened, everything was just like, man, that guy was so gifted. Golly, so he was gifted, way more man. gifted than I knew. I just thought, you know, when you hear Roger, you're thinking mm -hmm. the talk box. You know, right. that's the king of the talk box. That's who he was. No. But man, he got he had a guitar, uh, acoustic guitar. Backstage, we did, uh, it was the, remember a uh, uh, Vibe show with uh, uh, Sinbad hosted? Yeah, it was yeah, Quincy definitely. Jones produced. Yep. And we did that show, and he was backstage with acoustic guitar, just playing like the Spanish guitar stuff, mm -hmm. and was killing it. I was like, man, Roger Troutman was yeah, a, was a beast. beast. That guy was the truth, man. And his son, of course, you know, his son in Minnesota, yeah, definitely. Little Roger, and he died tragically, too. Yeah. But, man, he was so gifted, too. Rest in peace to these brothers, man. These are these are Absolutely. icons gone long before their time, bro. They should they should still be here. Should still be here. Way too soon, time. man. Man, I, we gotta get we gotta be talking about these people a little bit and kind of bringing them to the forefront, man. And um, because we don't they everybody's day is gonna come, but it doesn't have to be Absolutely. right now. Don't have to be so Absolutely. obscure and obsolete and dying and alone in a corner or a room by yourself i mean let's talk about the greatness that these people brought to the music industry that you yes, the music Lord. that you love so much like you know what i mean yeah. like i don't understand why anita baker that ain't still on the radio why isn't anita baker have a new album out right now you know what i mean i mean come on i have no idea i mean if adele can put still out an album her. and sell 900 million copies then anita baker should be able to put out an album at the same time marketed by the same company and then touring with her and then selling you know two million copies just based on who she is you know, that, that relevancy thing, sometimes people get into that conversation. I feel like these people will always be relevant. And I think it's just people just need to hear them again. I mean, Charlie Wilson is still hot. Charlie Wilson. You know, because he sings well. But I mean, so is Smokey Robinson. But, you know, the Isley Brothers. I mean, when you hear these people come up, you realize they're not new to the industry. It's just that some people haven't, you know, a lot of our younger people and uh, millennials and, and uh, younger generation X, they haven't had a chance to really hear them yet. But they need to. They do need to. Well, brother, what else? Oh, man, there's so much I could talk to you about. But my show is only like a 30-minute show, and I promise people I'm on oh. 30 minutes, and then I roll out. <laughs> okay. And then life goes on. My Billy, bad, man. I'm going to hold no, you no, over. Please. I just, I, I'm, I'm, I scripted for 30 minutes, and I, then I just go like, man, I just, just now I can get into some other stuff, but that's offline conversation. We can do that later on. Gotcha. Because now we have reconnected <laughs> like vines and branches. Because we we did a lot of stuff together, bro. We did a lot of we did projects man together. Lots and lots of I can't. It's so many that I can't even. I can't even think of a billion. So many projects. So I'm many just proud of you, man. Songs. Just always know, man. I've always been proud of you, man. You've been a, you've been an innovative man for years, doing stuff that none of us would have thought to do, man. And uh, to this day, I always think, man, you were doing 
all of these things, like doing your own beats, CDs, and stuff way before a lot of people was doing it. So you the cat, man. Still to this day, when you say ESPN, I was like, man, you are doing it always, man. I'm just so thankful, man, to see that God is still doing great things in your life, man. Oh, man. And your family is still beautiful. I see some of them pictures. Got, you know, God is good, blessed in, blessed in every way, and made some mistakes in life trying to work through this, knowing that God is my daily supply, and it's an endless supply, yeah. so I, I don't fret not, I just, I might go through my moments, but really, I keep picking it up, because I, every day he wakes me up and says, today yeah. is a new day. Yeah, we all make mistakes, man. What's good about it is God even takes the consequences of our mistakes and make them absolutely beautiful sometimes, but just sit there and put them wow. man, I don't know how this happens, <laughs> That's why I love you, Billy, because those, that you, this is who Billy still is, everybody. He's never been any different than this, ever, ever. He's always been the same guy. I, really, <laughs> I appreciate you so much, man, you know? I really do. Thank you, Billy, for coming appreciate on Appreciate you, brother. too, man. Absolutely. My best to you and your family and continued success with any of your projects. Anything I can do to help you, please reach out and let me know, brother, because, you know. I will, man, absolutely. Family, family. Hope to get down to Florida, man, in the wintertime and hang out with you, bro. Please call me, man. <laughs> Just call me. Come and hang out, bro. Please. All right, we'll do that, man. I'll get down there. Yes, Thank sir. Thank you so much, Billy. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Billy Steele. He was on my show. I'm so grateful to have friends like that. Like, I don't have a lot of friends in Florida. I'm trying to make friends, but, you know, it's difficult when you're, when you're <laughs> me. But uh, oh, I got a lot of friends in other places, man. And I'm going to tell you something that my sister once said to me, that God is good. This is true. This is very true. Guess what? I want to tell you about my next guest who's coming on the show because I'm excited. This is a friend of both mine and Billy's. Check this dude out. Pow! You recognize him? That's James Greer, producer, arranger, music director, leader of James Greer and Company, one of the most outstanding gospel groups on the scene. They be kicking butt. You feel me? They be going to another level. And I'm having this young man on the show. We go way back, man. We go way back to when he arrived there and then he had nothing going on. He was asking me, how do we get something cracking? And I just to watch his rise has been pretty spectacular. So I'm excited about that. Very excited indeed. Hey, if you want to follow me on social media, you can. I'm on all these various places. You know, you can get me there and kick it with me about anything at any time. It's as simple as that. Hit me up and we can kick it, all right? If you want to support me, I got some sample CDs. This will take you to my store where you can purchase those digital online download direct to your computer where you can pass them on to your, to your, to your sampler or to your son. I don't know, whatever. Get somebody making music in your house. I read a couple of books, too, and you can buy those online as well. Just like some history about the relationships in business and the, the gear you need, uh, where you, whether you're doing it for love or money, just so many various things to talk about all the time man i always got something to talk about but when i got guests like billy steel man you know it's um it's very it's very easy to, to put on a show but here's something on a very serious note and i want to do this real quick before i sign off and that is i want to kind of raise awareness a little bit about something that's important to me and that is suicide prevention uh, a lot of young people today are struggling man they just don't understand with this with this racism and with this hatred and all these the, all these people taking sides mm. and there's a lot of yeah. confused children and young people in this world and you know before you do anything drastic reach out to somebody let them know how you're feeling and uh, more importantly pick up that phone that's in your hand more likely and dial 1-800-273-TALK and that's the su suicide prevention lifeline that's that's very something very important to me and I, it's a it's something that i'm going to harp on from from here to eternity because i want to see people getting their mental a little bit better i struggle sometimes you know with, with life you know i can i can imagine some of these kids are going wow what is this world we're living in anyway anyway that's my show thanks again to billy Steele for coming on to the show and um I got some exciting guests coming on. Like I said, I got James Greer coming on this Saturday. So tune in and, uh, and check us out, man. It's going to be fun. We'll talk a little bit about what's happening in the future of gospel music and uh, what's happening in Minneapolis now that the sun is shining and the snow has melted. Anyway, that's my show. Guess what? I got to go. I hate to go, but I got to go. And uh, like I said before, on your way out the door, this is fire. Put your hair up and then scooch outside, please. Don't burn yourself. Peace.